Hey it's guys, Salt and Prepper here with another video. Today I wanted to do something a little bit different. As you can see, I'm in front of the camera today rather than behind it. So, what I wanted to talk about today wasn't any particular set of gear, any specific tactics. It's more along the lines of theory. And the theory that I had in mind, I believe would be greatly beneficial, not only in your prepping plan or survival plan, but I believe would benefit your community as a whole um, if more people kind of took it to heart. So first we're going to flash back to when early man was first stepping out of caves and said, hey, it'd probably be a lot easier for us to hunt this large game animals, dangerous game, if we hunted in groups rather than, you know, just being alone. So... This is done in humanity, but in also several different other species. But to go off of that, flash forwarding to 1902, there's an evolutionary biologist by the name of Peter Kropotkin. Now, Peter, Kropo Peter Kropotkin uh, published a small collection of essays called Mutual Aid. And what it was was a separate, distinguishable theory on evolution as opposed to Charles Darwin theory of evolution, which is, we all know, is uh, survival of the fittest. So, what is mutual aid? Essentially, mutual aid is when two or more people come together to solve a problem, accomplish a task, and it's mutually beneficial for everybody involved. So, as Kropotkin notes in his book, not only humans, but Several different other species adopted this mutual aid mentality, and those who did had a large advantage over those who did not. Now, back then, it was a uh, sort of a back and forth, well, not so much a back and forth, but a distinction between the more popular idea of Darwinism. Now, like Darwinism... Kropotkin's ideas kind of leaked into the political stream. Uh, Kropotkin was actually an anarchist. He's actually one of the more influ influential anarchists um, that people know of. And his theory of mutual aid also goes into how anarch anarchist praxis is typically carried out. Now, that is to, opposed to... Uh, Charles Darwin's theory, which is survival of the fittest, and that's been more or less co-opted into what is now known as social Darwinism, where only the strong will make it to the top, and people at the bottom, you got to just work harder, and that's, that's all there is to it. Now, while that sounds just very simple, and okay, yeah, I'll just work hard, and I'll get there, it's not exactly like that. Uh, in that theory, it's very cutthroat, and you're kind of burning a lot of bridges getting to that top. Now, mutual aid, how does it apply to survival? Well, you can get together with your guys, gals, non-binary pals, decide uh, who's good at what, who has what, who needs what, and go from there. So, for instance, uh, Mary might be an EMT, and Joe might be a gardener. And Jim might know something about sewing. And Jonathan might know how to purify water. So on and so on. Essentially, it's divvying out tasks to make it easier on the collective. Rather than one person trying to do everything. Um, one thing that I can tell you is no matter how good of a survivalist you are. No matter what kind of gear you buy, no matter how many classes you take, you're not going to be totally prepared for every situation. And just the sheer work alone that's needed to get the bare essentials, you'd be working constantly just to maintain the bare necessities of survival. So with that being said, I believe that mutual aid would be greatly beneficial in a survivalist and prepping scenario, as well as community at large. There's several different organizations and communities that employ things of uh, mutually beneficial nature. So, for instance, there's the Cajun Navy in Louisiana, 
who they typically help out during hurricanes. They've been doing it since Hurricane Katrina. Uh, there's volunteer fire departments, uh, volunteer ambulances. Um, there's, yeah, I'm trying to think of another good one. There was uh, Food Not Bombs. That's another really good one. There's a lot of these different organizations, and I suggest highly get involved in some of these organizations. Uh, for one, it'll make you feel good to donate your time, volunteer. Um, it'll feel good to get out the house for a little bit during these COVID times. And also, it will provide you very good resources. So not only will you be getting new skills, you know, you might become an EMT, you might you might learn how to do things out on the boat, for instance. Um, you also gain these connections through these organizations who will more than likely help you out in a time of need. So if you need something, if you need food, water, shelter, if you get involved with these groups, more than likely they will help you. So on top of that, that's an extra, not only is it, feeling good to help these people but it's also an extra tool to go in your tool bag if and when you need it so on that note i'll wish you guys a good night this has been salt and prepper y'all have a good night